You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Today we're in Grand Rapids, Michigan at Millbrook Tack. You know, the farm and feed business is alive and well. We're going to get a sneak peek at the Millbrook Tack Store remodel. This store has been in business for over 25 years and you can hear it and you can see it. They're expanding and creating a brand new beautiful look for their store. They've been here for 25 years, but they are expanding and making it look so much more beautiful and nice. We're gonna learn a lot about Michigan as well. We're gonna meet Megan Beeler in just a second. The manager of the store is gonna show us around. But first, a little bit about Michigan. A few of the innovations to come out of Michigan were first of all, Henry Ford created the assembly line for manufacturing, used all over the world now, from candy bars to everything else in manufacturing. Also, Michigan was the first state in the union to actually use water for power. They used water for electricity as a first state in the union. Another fun fact is that Michigan has over 3,000 miles of fresh water shoreline, the largest fresh water shoreline in the United States of America. Let's learn some things about Michigan, and let's learn some things about Millbrook Tat. In the mid-1800s, America was pushing west and expanding at a rate unknown to any previous civilization. Americans pursued their dreams and unlimited opportunity. But they needed food, equipment, seeds, and tack to press on beyond the established cities and towns already settled. Out of this demand, a new retailer was born, the General Store, who handled everything a westward family would need to survive. Today, these retailers provide rural Americans the same materials, service, and expertise that made them invaluable over 150 years ago. Join Noble Outfitters as we rediscover the retailing backbone of America. Hear their story in their own words, how they've not only survived, but actually thrived in the modern world. Come along as we go On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Hey, Megan, how are you? Well, good to see you, Dan. It's Welcome to Millbrook. good to see to you. Millbrook. Thank you very yeah. much for giving us a little sneak peek at the grand opening here. Absolutely. I mean, you, you guys are tearing stuff up. We are. There's still some banging up above us right now, and it's a, it's a little bit of a mess, but we are so excited I to mean, it's present this store. Because I, I mean, basically, from, from front to back, side to side, top to bottom, you've torn this place apart. We absolutely have. From the floors being ground to new lighting <laughs> to new fixtures, new products, it's just... Yeah, it's just, been crazy the last I was just looking at the cash area. It's going to be about 30 feet. What was it before? It was a little box, yeah. so in the middle <laughs> of the store. So yes, it's much, much larger now. How fun. So we can serve our guests better. So, you know, we're going around the country and we're celebrating the local farm and feed tax shops mm -hmm. that have kept all the farms and, and ranches, you know, supplied for over the years, hundreds of years mm -hmm. in this country. And it's always fun to go visit them because they're always doing something that uh, is specific to their local area. They mm -hmm. take care of their local customer. They listen to what the local customer Absolutely. needs and they're taking care of that local customer. And just in walking around the store, I noticed you have, you know, you have a ton of, you do Western and do English, do. tack of, mm -hmm. of, of both kinds. But on the Western side, what I find interesting, you have a lot of like decorative boots, you know, we more do. so than, than I've seen before. Okay. Is, what's the reason for the decorative boots or the, the beautiful, like the beautiful boots? Well, we have found um, that our customer is wanting and needing um, boots for many of the country concerts they go to. That's very popular in this area and they're looking for that. So um, that's popular with our young generation. Um, that's also popular with some of our um, older generation, we can say, so that they love a good boot. They're looking for a good quality boot. They're looking for something that it's got a great break-in yeah. um, time so, on them and some fancy designs. You know, it's interesting you talk about the stylish boot, you know. We make all of our, you know our products, that we make everything from, you know, manure forks to, to sure. beautiful shirts. And, sure. and the funny thing is, is that people are the ones that tell us what to make. Mm -hmm. So we have these focus groups. We're actually gonna have three of them this week when we're out on the road and we sit with people and they just tell us what, and sometimes they don't actually tell us what's wrong or what okay. they need. They just tell us about something else. So actually, before we made this boot, we were supposed to be making a sock that helps with the break-in of a boot. 
because when you get a brand new pair of boots, you get blisters, they hurt sure. for a long time. And so we're trying to make a sock with certain areas to protect against the blisters. And so we kept hearing job. it, but the, the socks are great, <laughs> yeah. but we kept hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. And finally, after a while, we said, no, wait a minute, why don't we try to make a boot that doesn't hurt for mm -hmm. the break-in. Mm -hmm. So I know you, you, I you have a- I love mine, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I, they're light as a feather, and that's are. the thing. When you first show it to people, they're yeah. like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. this is just like a feather. Um, but it's made for no break-in. Mm -hmm. um, so you basically could wear, you could buy a, a brand new pair of stylish right. boots like this, right. and then just go to the concert tonight, and that's dance all do. night, yeah. <laughs> you got no problem, you know. It's a great choice for our customers, Yeah, Absolutely. so that's fun. that was fun for us to come up with something in, in the Western boot market. So, uh, well, let's take it's a fun. look around and, uh, and let's <laughs> see, let's let's see all go. the different products that you've got. Wonderful. Thank you for showing me around. Well, Dan, I'm going to bring you back here. We're going to introduce you to Larry, and he's going to talk to us about our Western saddles. Larry, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. I'm Dan Costa Glad from to meet you, Noble Outfitters. I, I appreciate you taking some time with us today. No problem, my pleasure. So, how long have you been with Millbrook? I've been with Millbrook about five years. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you worked a little bit in the uh, Western Department? Yeah, mainly mainly here in the Western Department, once in a while over in uh, horse care products, but mostly over here in Western. So, what do we have here? What type of saddle is this? Well. Different from the old saddles that the old cattle drivers used to ride, and these saddles are built so much different. And the horses today, of course, have changed the style from the old ranch horses to the modern day horse. They're, they're so much better fed, and, and all the supplements and stuff they get, the horses have a tendency to be a little rounder. Mm -hmm. So your, your modern day saddles are, are a totally different fit. And of course, we can fit saddles for almost any horse, from narrow trees to middle trees to extra wide trees. Okay, so over the years, the horse's body actually has changed. It now. has. It's it become has. a little more rounder, not as lean, not as tall. Correct. Interesting. Yep. Yep. And and this saddle I see has a long horn, right? This is well, a this horn. is a barrel saddle. This okay. is a custom barrel saddle. And of course, the, uh, the folks that do the barrel racing like to have something to hold on to as those horses Make the Turn. turns around oh, the barrels. Oh yeah, they're they're moving. A little deeper seat, so they're more in a uh, what they call a a, a bear claw, and uh, it it holds them in the saddle a little bit better and a little deeper. I see. And um, if I, if I were riding, I may need an actual bear claw to keep me in the saddle. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm not a I'm we, not a very good rider. We have Velcro for people like yeah, you. Yeah, that, that's perfect. <laughs> I need a I need actually a a seat belt if yeah, I got uh -huh. on. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking some time today. I appreciate you uh, showing us around. I appreciate your hospitality and keep up the good work and uh, keep the saddles in business and, and we, uh, we will. Keep, the, keep the local farm and feed and local tax shops thriving. This shop isn't just in business. This shop is thriving. Right. So thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate you. meeting you. I'm glad you were here. Okay, my pleasure. All right. Well, let's go see some more of the store. Sounds good. All right. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Coming up next, we're going to meet the owner of this beautiful store, Laura Howell. And she's going to tell us about how it all got started and how they're expanding and thriving here at Millbrook's Tech. I love these. These are cute. <laughs> Dan, I'd like to introduce you to Laura, the owner of Millbrook. Hi, Hi Laura. Dan. How nice are you? to meet you. Hey, thank you. You are welcome. Very much for yeah. showing me around. Absolutely, it was a great time. We'll catch up before I go. Sounds good. All right, Laura, this is uh, this is quite an operation you got here. Thank you. We we really enjoy it. Uh, you got, you've got a massive remodel going on. Yes, it's been a mess for a long time. This I love is it. Much... I love it, but it shows that there's expansion. There's there's things that are happening, you're doing better, you're growing, you know. Uh, when did you start the store? My parents actually opened in their backyard in 1992 or so. I love it, in their yeah. backyard, yep. okay. I mean that, that's pure Americano. Right oh yeah, Okay. Grassroots. That's the definition the of mom and pop. So what, 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 how did that start? Why the backyard? Why did they start in the beginning? What, why? What were they doing? They were avid Arabian horse breeders and wanted to find a way to supplement that addiction. Okay. And so they started selling horse trailers and then eventually we moved into a strip mall and grew from there. Okay, so obviously the product of the horse, which would be tack and trailers and anything else to go with it, yes. they were just expanding. And that's that's just so typical, you know, just expanding. I, I opened my first business, it was a little soup and sandwich shop 
and we opened 30 of those wow. uh, over the years. And then we actually ended up making a commissary to make all the products inside of a central kitchen, like a commissary. We ended up becoming food processors and then selling the products to the supermarkets and built that business up and uh, sold it to Tyson Foods. So, <laughs> it's a, you know, started with a sandwich shop. And here you guys started out of the backyard yep. and when you were just a kid. So when did you start working at the store? I started in 1992 when we moved into the strip mall and I've been here ever since. You were just a kid, so <laughs> yes. just starting out. Well, that's great. It's a beautiful store and it's wonderful to think about how all the local mom and pop tack shops, feed stores, farm and feeds around the country take care of their local customer. There's things specifically here that you do to take care of your local customer. Absolutely. And it's so funny when I go around the store, I go around the country, I cannot find a store that doesn't sell the strangest group of products that any retailer has. Uh, you have some tutus behind yes. you. You have toys, you have Western boots, English saddles, serious tack, and fun things for the kids, belts, bracelets, jewelry, cowboy hats, Western hats, helmets for riding. And, and it's just an interesting one-stop shop. But what has happened is that the old farm and feed store, the old mercantile, as the settlers were moving across, basically that's what they had to have. They had to have basically everything because when the farmers came in, they had to pick up everything one stop. There wasn't any other stores in town. That's it right. was the old mercantile, the old general store. So we do the same thing here. Um, what do you think has been one of the secrets to your success here? Loving our customers, loving people who love horses and just treating them right. The golden rule is big around here. So yeah. Probably a lot of it is just, just hard work. Yes, <laughs> a little bit of that too. You know, it's an interesting thought to think about the farm, right? The American farm, the American farmer, the American rancher, mm -hmm. someone who has a horse, someone who has a tractor, someone that's doing things outside. And I just saw this little, little piece here that you're selling here. On this farm, we do hard work, caring, respect animals, planting, harvesting, faith, and love the family. I mean, that's just America, right? Those are American values that come from, if you think about it, in the beginning when we came here, there were no grocery stores. There were no places to go and just pick up all the different things you need, meats and vegetables and all the things you need at home. You had to grow them yourself. So you grew your protein, you had animals, you had a garden, you had farms to make your money. And, and that, that means, up at daybreak, asleep at midnight, you know, oh, harvesting yeah. when the harvest is to harvest. So that hard work ethic from the farmer is something that I think is, it's a little bit scary for me because I think it's, it's waning a little bit in the country. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit scary. So we'd like to, we'd like to promote hard work and, and dedication to your customer, to your family and, and whatever. And, and it seems like this, industry is a perfect example of that. It sure is. Yes. So I, I just applaud you for the hard work that you've done here. Um, there's obviously a specific loyalty that the people have in this store. I can tell you walking around with Megan, um, it, it wouldn't be any different if she owned the store. Um, she feels as if this store is hers. So there's a sense of ownership, a sense of pride in all the products that are here. And all the people that I've spoken to here have a very strong feeling about the, the way we treat our customer and the way we take care of the store. That starts at the top. So I want to congratulate you for running a good program and, and being their mentor and, and leading by example and hard work yourself because I know this has taken a lot of hard work. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your hospitality here You're today. welcome. It's been an absolute treat. We've enjoyed it. Thank you. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters coming up next on the Noble Child of the Week. You're going to meet Wyatt Tubergen. He is an absolute character and a fun young man. Stay tuned. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters and today for the Noble Child of the Week we've got Wyatt Tubergen 
and Wyatt is an absolute character. You're going to enjoy meeting him. So Wyatt, first of all, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, we've been talking for a little bit, but I haven't mentioned anything, but uh, you, you've got an amazing head of hair, okay? And it's, and it's for me, you know, see like, you know, you know, <laughs> you know hopefully you don't look like this when you right, get older, yep. but, but that's, that's, that's a dandy set of hair you got there. <laughs> You got it nice and uh, slicked, and uh, you use a little gel on that too. Hairspray. Hairspray, do yeah. you? Okay. Well, Wyatt, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you for coming and spending no some problem. time with us. And I, I just want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and you're you're 12, right? Yep. Okay. So tell me a little bit about what 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 do you do with yourself? Well, usually when I get off of school, I go out, walk my steer. Uh, he likes carrots, so I feed him carrots. Work in the work in my dad's shop. Um, what kind of shop is it? What's your dad do? He's an excavator. Okay. Tuber and construction. Okay. So, um, just punch in and clean out the shop, clean trucks. I like it. So do you have any siblings? Do you have brothers, yep. brothers, sisters? Two sisters and one brother. Okay. Older brother or younger? Younger. Younger. So two, you... two older sisters. Okay. Older sisters. Yep. Yeah. I know how those older sisters could be, <laughs> huh? Yeah. yeah. So are they tough on you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're tough. They're in my case. Yeah, it's it's typical. Yep. So, uh, you know, I like the fact, though, that you're 12 years old and you're working. You're helping your dad in the shop. Yeah. And then you also show animals as well, right? Yep. So tell me a bit about what you do on the show side. Okay, well, um, I have a steer and I'm going to get um, a pit. So his name is Ford. So you do pigs show as side. well, right? Yeah. And so, but you don't have any pigs right now, but you did pigs last year? Yep. no, I did lambs last year. Lambs. So yeah. you do... You're going to do this year, though, steers? Yep, and a pig. And a pig. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. During the time that this pig is bulking up, it's a lot of work, huh? Yeah. I mean, how they, many how they, many times a day you got to feed them? Feed them? Well, it's an automatic feeder. So okay. you just put it in, they can eat as much as they want. Okay, and they do, do. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they eat a lot. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, and how long of a time before they go from, like, 60 to 80 pounds to the, to the 300 and something? They can, I don't know. I don't know how many pounds a day. I think it's like three pounds a day. That's crazy. Game. It's pretty crazy. That's amazing. So, um, you know, it's a lot of hard work though, because you gotta, what time in the morning you gotta get started? Um, every morning we get up to 6.30 for school. Yeah. But in the summer, it's probably about seven. Then we go out and feed them at 7.30, um, walk them, make sure they got water. Yeah. The pig, it's an automatic water, so we gotta make sure it's still running and get some cold water in there. Have you sold your animals? Yep. August. And uh, what happens with the dinero? Um, well, first I tithe. Okay. Tithe the church. Really? And then I uh, put my money in the bank. Good man. And then the rest. And you put, put how, how, how much money do you have in the bank? Um, I'm probably not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the, R the IRS isn't listening, so okay. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. It's well, just, uh, right it's now just... I got 3500 3500 bucks, and you're 12 years old. Yep. God bless you, young man. I love it. What kind of message would you have for the kids out there that are 12 years old to just let them know that there's, there's so much for them to do out there that they can do and make some money, save their money, and, and get started? What, what would you tell them? Well, if you're in a neighborhood, go oh, up in the, in the fall. Raking leaves is easy. And I used to rake way. leaves. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. If you have a blower, go blow them. Yeah. Go mow their yard. Yeah. Walk their dog. I don't know. So if, many ways to make a few bucks, right? Right. I mean, clean their houses, clean their cars, do a little car wash. Up the ca <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> you are a little entrepreneur. <laughs> so let me ask you something. What are you going to do? When Wyatt is like twenty some years old, what 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 are you gonna well, do when you get older? Um, gradually work with my dad. Okay. In his business. So you like to follow your dad's yep. footsteps and be a Someday. part of that. Okay. That's fun. I'd like to give you something. I'd like to give you a, a crisp hundred dollar bill to put wow. in your. <laughs> I want Thank you to you. put. <laughs> you're welcome, sir. I'd like you to put that in your bank account. No problem. And I want you to remember me, and I want you to remember that that from a, from a person that started working when they were very young, raking leaves, right. picking fruit, doing whatever, and you know, and I've become, you know, financially um, stable, let's say, you know, and, and because this is America, you can do anything you want. You said you wanted to be a diesel 
uh, mechanic. mechanic. Okay, so no problem. If you want to become a diesel mechanic, you can. Right. Do you know that in some countries, you can't just do what you want to do? I mean, you can't do anything you want to do. It's not like that everywhere. Right. This is America. You can do anything you want. So if you want to be a diesel mechanic and as sharp as you are, and with that head of hair, you're going to be a <laughs> diesel mechanic. <laughs> well, thank you very yeah. much for taking some time with me, buddy. No and uh, I'd like to stay in touch and, uh, and see how you're doing over the years. Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much for yep. taking the time with me. Coming up next on the recipe of the week, you're going to meet Wilda Torelli and she is going to show us a beautiful recipe that's nice and light and perfect for the summer. Welcome back. You're on the road with Noble Outfitters and today for our recipe of the week, we're going to talk about something that's a little on the light side, which is very popular today with people watching their diets and things like I should be doing. And today we have Wilda Torelli. And Wilda is not only a, a great employee of this store and has been for a long time, but she's kind of kind of a chef wannabe, I think. Uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about a great recipe here. So you've got a salad here and you've got like a chicken skewer. So let's first start out with the chicken. Tell me about this chicken because I, I had a little snip here and it's very, very tasty. So marinade or how, how did you get to that point of the flavor? So I came up with this chicken recipe. It's a boneless, skinless thigh and I chose that. It's very hard to overcook. Used to be quite inexpensive. You know, it's interesting. People don't use thigh meat as much as they really could because, you know, they, they're all thinking white meat and the breast. But the breast is a, is a drier product than the thigh meat. The thigh meat has a lot more moisture in it than the right. breast meat. Very easy to overcook the breast meat. And then you, after you've uh, kind of barbecued your, your breast meat here, so, uh, your thigh meat here, so uh, then what? Then you, you've got your salad going here. Yes, and I do use a, a like a New Orleans type of just a, a spice on the chicken, which makes it really simple. A little bit of apple beer, um, tore up some greens, and you know, you can just make this your own. It doesn't have to be my recipe, whatever greens you like. We like spinach and the different cabbage, or excuse me, not cabbages, the different colored lettuces. And then I put some goat cheese, which is a really mild goat cheese. A lot of people compare it to like a, a cream, kind of a cream cheese. I use pecans, because I like pecans a lot better than walnuts. And we use cherries in it. Um, cherries, we grow a lot of cherries here in Michigan. Dried cherries, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the dressing and how this has to do with beer. Um, I started out with um, an apple beer. It, the recipe calls to reduce it, but I didn't care for it that way, so it's just plain beer with some very nice um, olive oil, and then I put in some seasoning. It calls for time, but when I got home at 7 last night, I was out of time. Not, no, I'm not a pun, I was out of the seasoning, so I used Italian seasoning instead. Oh, it's delicious. Um, and then I added some balsamic vinegar and a few little seasonings. Well. We are gonna share this recipe with our viewers. Every week, we share the recipe of the week with our viewers out there. You just go to nobleoutfitters.com slash RFDTV and see all of our recipes from all of our shows and enjoy them at home with your family as well. And I wanna thank you, Wilda, for taking some time to show us this special recipe and spend a little bit of time with us. We really appreciate it. Yep, and thanks for coming. Thank you, sweetheart. Got a lot of work to do at Millbrook Tech. We got two weeks to get this store open, so they put me to work. If any of you have any time, come on out and give us a hand. I don't know where we're gonna end up next week, but we may be late, because we got a lot of work to do here. Okay, we're going up top side. Let's see what we got going on on the roof. You know, Laura at Noble Outfitters, we'll do anything for our customers. If I have to stay here for two weeks and help you get this store ready, that's what we're gonna do. Thank you for your business. <laughs> this isn't as easy as it looks, boss. <laughs> how, how do we look? Not too good. Not too good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> we'll never get open. <laughs> I got some lettuce on my teeth. You want that? <laughs> You're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Have I, think, I got? I think you need to redo that. There's something in your teeth. You want Laura closer? 
To me, I mean. Would you like that? <laughs> just, just a little closer. Just a little closer, Laura. Okay, can you put your arm uh, around me? Oh, there you okay, go. okay, thank you. I'm just doing it for the picture. <laughs>